pin a comment. All right, I think we might be live on one side. All right, we are live on Facebook. Welcome back to The Change Physician. I'm Melissa Katie, The Challenge Doctor with my co-host, Dr. Kevin Kakaro, here for our Saturday salutations to say hi uh, to one another. And uh, I almost feel like we should do a high five on the, the cross screen here, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It might be wrong because I'm going to be flipped on the other side. Yeah. Um, welcome that's, that's back. That's also always kind of confusing because it is like we're looking in different Your directions. Image. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are here today to share some of the recent episodes and uh, any recent events or anything we feel like going on a tangent about. And as of last week, we had, um, let's see here, while Kevin's doing all of his updates for his page, I'm going to share the last week would be four hour work week with, uh, by Tim Ferriss was a book we reviewed on March 27th that was released on the podcast. And I think that was one of the, it's, that's been around a while. And I remember listening to an audio book and I think you read the book and, uh, just a totally different kind of outlook and just, I wouldn't say it was, um, I think at the place I was at, it resonated with kind of where I think I was probably going and trying to think of just being a little bit of a different kind of physician, a little bit of an entrepreneur. So I think that that helped me realize that you can, you know, create things and uh, maybe create a system and not have to trade your time for money all the time, even though I do trade my time uh, in the operating room um, to, to make a living as well. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think for me, um, it was it was a mind shift book. It, mm -hmm. it was it was one of the books. Actually, I should put it on a list because I was just remembering other mind shift books. And what I mean by that is, it was something that completely opened my eyes to a to something I was unaware of. Mm -hmm. Like I had been aware of business owners and stuff, but the the thing about the four hour week work, work week was this idea of deferred lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um you know, this idea that you work for 30 years, you save everything, then you retire kind of a thing rather than being really more active. And it's not to say don't do any of that stuff, but be more active of, of living a life that you want now. Mm -hmm. Um, and, or in being more cognizant of that. So I think it relates to a lot of things. Like if you hate your job, mm -hmm. then don't hate your job for 30 years so that you can retire. I'm not saying quit your job, but what I am saying is maybe be active and engaged in trying to find other opportunities because you're, you're to leverage all that time for this goal of retirement is just I mean, it, the cost benefit ratio simply isn't there. And yeah. that was a big one for me. It's like, Whoa, wait, there's something different. Um, and then I think as I shared on that, I met people who quite literally uh, were living lives that were completely different than I even thought possible. Like, just blows my mind and, and, um, it's super cool anyway. So I enjoyed that. I don't, I, I think it's a little bit outdated now and there's literally a, like a chunk in the book that covers it. So I think if people just got it from their library or whatever, you don't necessarily have to buy the book. Yeah, definitely. And then we did another uh, kind of review of a, a book on our release was March 31st. So just this past Thursday on um, how to change when change is hard by, uh, Dan Heath and Chip Heath, I think they're brothers that wrote Switch, correct? Brothers? Yep. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on that? <laughs> that was another mind shift book. <laughs> yes. Uh, and and that one shifts. was, that for me was this like recognition of, of, of the problems with healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, which we just kind of talked about not too long ago. But if you're looking at, you know, like, what is it? I, I, now I'm, I'm missing up the, my, my percentages, but well, 90% of health, 90% of, of healthcare dollars are spent in the medical system. 70% of those dollars are on the treatment of chronic care. So high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, et cetera. And, but all chronic diseases are basically diseases of lifestyle. And, um, and I'm not, what I'm saying is they're diseases of things that you have to get either exercise, diet, stress reduction, all of them together at once. And that's something that we just don't do very well in the medical system. And um, Switch told me why is like, you know, this whole idea of information because the behavioral change in, in medicine is to give them a handout. That doesn't change behavior in like almost anybody. And so if you're a physician and you're frustrated on why are my patients doing these things, I'm saying 
uh, diet and exercise and they never diet and exercise. Uh, Swish was a big one for me because that, that was like, oh my God, we're talking about behavioral change. And this is a whole nother field and how we do it in medicine is totally wrong because we're not, we're, <laughs> it's totally ineffective. Yeah. So that was, that was a big one for me. Yeah. Well, it makes me think about a recent interview that I, I will keep. Uh, I won't say which interview it was, but we definitely had talked about how a lot of physicians want help with their own wellness, yet they're the ones providing medical care in this country. And we're not even, we're, we're in a situation where even the physicians themselves are not even taught some of the things that are so important to wellness. And uh, um, so you can imagine if that behavioral change has not been implemented and it's hard for them to do with themselves, it sometimes can be hard to do for others or help others. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Um, anything you'd like to share from the past uh I guess I went solo last Saturday for just a quick little jump in for a few minutes. And few minutes. I said you had something to celebrate, but I didn't want to say unless you wanted to share. Oh, well, well I guess, was that my birthday last? Was it Saturday? Yes. My birthday was on Saturday. Yes. So happy oh, birthday. Okay. Thank you. From Thank me you. and the uh, listening community to Kevin Kakaro. <laughs> you know, it was, it's, it's sort of a weird thing. Cause I used to, particularly in my twenties, um, I used to drag out my birthday for like a week and get people to take me out to lunch for like a week straight and do all the stuff. And, yeah. and then um, my son's birthday is actually March 17th. And I've sort of joked that that was a birthday, early birthday present. And it took away all the rest of them because then as he was growing up, obviously the priority was for him. Mm -hmm. And so my birthdays have kind of fallen off, but with this one, we actually went on a trip. We were up in Seattle for um, three days and it was just nice we just had a really good time and it was with my family and and we had a ball it was it was awesome. it was a very fun birthday it wasn't a week long and obviously i totally forgot about it because you have you've mentioned it today and i'm like wait birth oh yeah i did i did have a birthday last week i totally it forgot just about it. flew by <laughs> yeah it just gone by um but that was good i did have a couple things i wanted to share i was sure. thinking about that number one on my path to so this was my 49th birthday and so I've actually been stressing because on my 50th birthday, if you guys remember last year, I said, um, I've been doing a kettlebell workout. I've been doing it for over a year now. It's called simple and sinister by Pavel, whatever his Russian last name is. And, um, there's two exercises and I love it, but my goal was to get to the heaviest kettlebell in the program, which is a 48 kilo bell, which is 105 pounds. Wow. And do these extra, it's kettlebell swing. And the other one's a trickish get up. And I'm at the, um, I'm at the 32 kilo bell right now. And I've been at it for a while and actually backed off because I didn't think I was making progression. And so I'm really kind of stressing if I'm going to make this goal, but I just had my workout today before we started. And I was like, man, I felt so good. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. So that's one thing. The other thing is, um, I think we had talked about the last, maybe one, maybe two weeks ago at our Facebook live. And if we didn't, I'm going to talk about it now is I've kind of noticed. And so the theme with the change position, we're talking about like the mindset and strategies to kind of improve your life. And so I've been really interested in um, where does my development come from? Like, how is it that I improve? And the things that make a difference for me is gamification. And with pieces of that being uh, tracking and daily routines. And then having some sort of external goalposts for me. Part of it is, if, again, if you've been listening to this for a long time, you know my stupid Marriott journey and these goals. Like last year when we were trying to hit platinum and I was doing all this goofy stuff. And the Marriott app makes it very easy to gamify because here's a little tracker and you can do all this stuff. And they send these things. Oh, if you, this promo is if you rent one night for during this period, you're going to get two nights and all this stuff, or at least credit for two nights. And, um, and so I'm like, okay, this gamification thing. And so this morning, literally, because also with the journal, I do in that line, the five year journal, like you do, and I'll put stuff at the end. And I notice I'm like, I totally forget about this the next day until the next. And so I'm like, I, so I opened it up this morning and it said gamification. So I started researching gamification today. And there is a, a psychologist, Jane McGonigal. I don't know if you've heard about her. She's got a Ted talk. Um, she had a traumatic brain injury and had to, she was like into game design and things. And so she had to recover. So she started gamifying this whole process of rehab for herself. Hmm. And I thought about the book 
and I actually have it in our Amazon bin called Super Better, which is about gamification of your life. But I also made a promise at the beginning of the year I was going to try not to buy any more nonfiction books. <laughs> so then I decided, well, I'll just go read the blog posts on it. But even better than that, she's got an app. This oh. app is called Super Better. And um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. I just got it today, but it is freaking cool. Like you can go in there, you can set these things. They have little badges. They have these little challenges that happen. Um, there's, it, I mean, there's quite honestly, there's so many of them that can get a little overwhelming, but it's pretty, I mean, it's cool. Like you can click this stuff and there's short little things and it says, you got two 10 points and you did this and da, 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 da. And you can do, you can set these goals. If you want to do stress or diet or nutrition or sleep or, or emotional growth or resiliency and, wow. um, and it's free. That's the other thing. I'm like, oh, I'm looking at this thing and I download it and I'm like, okay, most of these things. They have some limited utility. Um, and then there's usually some sort of in-app purchase or whatever. I can't find any in-app purchases. And I've been looking for them for like an hour. Wow. Um, wow. So anyway, that's my thing. And so uh, I, I might end up talking about it more on future Facebook lives because I typically share my journeys on these these little things. And it's it's pretty cool. Like it's, it's pretty cool. Huh, I'm looking... Actually, it says term, the term gamification, this is in her blog, uh, coined by the computer programmer Nick Pelly in the early 2000s, signified the application of game mechanics, particularly from video games and non-game areas. It's now a big business, uh, but then it's apparently the philosophy that underlies the super better method methodology is called gameful design. Um, she coined that phrase, uh, Jane McGonigal, you're talking about in 2010. That's the philosophy of applying the deep, intrinsically motivating elements of games to non-game areas, not just making the use of game tactics like badges and points and leadership boards. And that's interesting. Yeah. And, and so you're taking it and all this like diet and lifestyle and, and meditation, all these healthy life strategies, but doing it in such a way that is actually interested and engaging and builds into this thing that we love external rewards and we love getting those little you know notifications that's why facebook and instagram and all these things you know they're designed to grab your brain so they kind of kind of kind of doing that and on the other hand it is easy to get in a rabbit hole of like i could see where it can get a little overwhelming when you're like oh i'm going to do this one because there are these little short challenges like i don't know go find something beautiful in fact i'm stuck on one right now where it's like Notice three things in your environment that are new and beautiful. I've been stuck in, I live, I work at home. It's been COVID for two years. And I'm, I'm like walking around. I, I, there's nothing I haven't seen. It's like, it's really hard. That's a really hard challenge. <laughs> but it's, wow. kind of, yeah, it's, yeah, I should, I should look in this. It's funny because, you know, I hold the challenge doctor thing. The first thing they say is challenge yourself. And like, you know, that's always like key little phrases that trigger me. Um, but the, uh, their mission, trying to work with allies and partnerships, they want to unlock the heroic potential of 50 million youth by 2025. And they're talking about the depression among 12 to 25 year olds grew on over 61% between 2011 and 2017. And anxiety and suicide rates are up too. So, I mean, this is not just a overall wellness. This is like, this is like can change people's lives. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm curious to see how this whole thing rolls out over time. Um, but yeah, that, that seems I'll have to take a peek or and listen to that Ted talk. Oh yeah. Goodness. And then the other thing I learned this morning when I was, and I don't know why this didn't come to mind either is her sister is Kate McGonigal and Kate McGonigal is a psychologist who wrote lots and lots about willpower. Hmm. Um, and also has some really fascinating research. And then the, I'm like, Oh my God, talk about, power siblings you got these two, yeah. like that's crazy right you're you got i don't know anyway i found that really really interesting because i mean obviously this stuff i'm interested in brain behavioral and chant ch you know strategies habit formation all that stuff and uh, so it's been a very good day i have to say it's been a very yeah good well i have to share this little this little uh grid thing they show like the super better rules and what creates psychological strengths they talk about if you challenge yourself, you can create the challenge mindset. If you collect and activate power-ups, helps with emotional control. 
you find and battle the bad guys and it gives you mental flexibility. You seek out and complete quests and it gives you a sense of purpose. You recruit your allies as social connected that represents social connectedness, adopt a secret identity and helps create self-efficacy and you go for an epic win and you have optimism. That's kind of cool. It is cool. Love it. it is. Yeah, I have to say it's, uh, yeah, it, it's been a, it's been a hoot. Now, granted, it's only been one day, so I have one data point here. But um, it, now you can't help out. but when you look at this image of I don't Can know. Can you share the image? Yeah, let me pull it up. Share screen. This one. So if you can see here, can you see it? Mm -mm. Uh, oh, here we go. Now you can see it. Okay. So I was just talking about these things in her superbetter.com website, and then talks about how it helps improve resilience. Ironically, when you look at improving protective factors and reducing obstacles to resilience, like it, it reminds me of all this, like, stress, anxiety, and pain stuff we talk about. It's you know? it, well, it's all related. I yeah. Mean, and as I've said, you know, the pain brought me into, you know, pain science is brain science, brain science is neuroscience and neuroscience is really a science of living. Yeah. And, uh, in, yeah, that's what I'm grateful for, for, for pain is to kind of introduce me to this stuff and this, cause it is super cool. It I mean, is super cool. People think if you've just been introduced to it, they're like, what? I got to wrap my head around that. <laughs> yeah, they, and it, and I, you know, from the from the pain standpoint, it's frustrating because you try to introduce them. They're like, "Oh, you're telling me I'm a faker, and my pain's not real." And I'm like, "No, I'm telling you, your pain is totally real, but it's constructed and is really. I mean, there's all the stuff fits together, and the more you know, the more in control you'll you can be, and the more of your experience, and even better than that, the more you can grow because it's going beyond this. This affects every aspect of your life, like every aspect of your life, yeah. and it's super cool, totally cool. Yeah. Yeah, self-efficacy, resiliency, all this stuff is like super interesting stuff. And yeah. we're all works in progress. Uh, so, uh, you know, these give you the, the ability to believe that you can transform or change whatever this problem might be. But cool. Well, you want to take us out? Sure. Well, thank you all for joining us for today's Saturday salutations. Uh, always a pleasure to see you guys. And thank you so much, Melissa, for covering for me yesterday as I was playing or for last week when I was playing hooky. Um, we're actually going to, for next week, we will be doing Sunday salutations, mm -hmm. uh, because somebody else's birthday is on Saturday and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll re reveal that mystery next Saturday. You know, I don't know what to do with this or point the thing. Um, as always, if you're joining us today on Saturday salutations, we usually start around noon, sometimes a little bit later Pacific time. The next week it'll be Sundays. And if you're interested in staying in touch, go to thechangephysician.com, whether you're a physician or a physician ally. Until next time, stay well. Take care.